Welcome to Electro Online, and now let's take a look at the Jovian planets. We have a pretty good idea how the terrestrial planets formed. They seem to follow the simulations that we wrote, and when we played them to the end, we ended up with the four terrestrial planets, just like we have in real life. But how did the Jovian planets form? Well, we already know that most of the light material, water vapor, hydrogen, helium, methane, and ammonia, got pushed out into the outer solar system, beyond the frost line. And so the terrestrial planets were not able to scoop up any of that gas because by the time they were formed, the gas was already long gone. But what happened out here where it's really cold, temperatures dropping well below the freezing point? Well, Jupiter and Saturn, as well as Uranus and Neptune, actually have rocky cores. So there was enough of the material, silicon and oxygen, that formed together into silicon dioxide and eventually the building blocks of rock. So the large Jovian planets do have a sizable core the cores of Jupiter and Saturn are believed to be much larger than the Earth itself. And especially Jupiter is believed to have a rocky core that may be much more than 10 times the mass of the Earth. So once it accumulated all that rock and began to form that, that center of those planets, there was a lot of gravitational force plus a lot of gas floating around that region. And gas was slowly being pulled in because of the gravitational attraction of these cores. And as they grew in size, gravity just continued to increase. And slowly over time, a lot of the gas that was in that region past the frost line was simply absorbed or accreted by the gravitational attraction, growing the planets to these enormous sizes. Remember, Jupiter has more than 300 times the mass of the Earth, which means that it has a mass in, in gas of hydrogen and helium 300, 300 times the mass of the Earth. So it's amazing how they were able to gravitationally attract all that of gas and just simply clean out that region of all the gases, gaseous material that was there available. We do know that some of it ended up even much farther away into what today is the Copper Belt and even further than that around the solar system in terms of the Oort cloud. And we'll explore how that happened or how we think that happened. Of course, no one's there to see it, but we have some ideas. And so we'll explore some of the ideas how the rest of the solar system formed the way it did. But it's just very interesting how none of the gas was left behind in the inner solar system. So that these are simply terrestrial planets with very little atmosphere as compared to the enormous amount of gas quantities they were able to absorb in the region that was where all the gas was pushed past the frost line in the early stages of the solar system. And that's how the planets got to be differentiated.